Namaste. So in this video, we will look at the status of the Tamil Nadu temples in 2022. Now for centuries, Tamil Nadu kept out the Kali, Kali Bhagwan, who would punish. Uh, so when most of India was struggling under Islamic conquest and British conquest, the fallback, the, the consequences of such conquests in Tamil Nadu was not too bad. There was only one Muslim invasion and one or two genocides in Madurai around 1300 uh, AD. But largely it was peaceful. So actually we had, Tamil Nadu had people coming from Andhra and Karnataka etc. settling here because we were peaceful when their own states were and most of north was under Islamic occupation and people were struggling. Uh, so for example, in my own case, what my my grandfather, my father's 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 father came, no, grandfather came running from Hyderabad, from, uh, yeah, from Hyderabad state then because of persecution by the Nawab. So he moved to Tanjavur in, uh, Tanjavur in Tamil Nadu. So this has happened. So there were many, there were, uh, yeah, th this was happening. And also uh, after Vijayanagar Empire, after the, after the Tamil Nadu came under the Vijayanagar Empire, they were also the ruling class uh, from uh, Karnataka. There was also movement from Maharashtra to, uh, to around Madurai area. So Tamil Nadu was one of the few places in, 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 Tamil, in India which kept out much of the consequences of uh, the, the thousand years of conquest that India has faced. Now, <laughs> and this is because of the uh, stunning amount of temples and the extreme devoutness of the uh, people and locality. So we already had the very famous Cholas uh, a thousand years ago. Uh, they were there from I think 800 uh, AD to 1200 AD. I think ballpark is that and uh, they really stabilized Hindu religion here and built these stunning temples and also got the Periya Puranam recovered the, the, the basic ten, the basic story of Hinduism in Tamil Nadu recovered from uh, the Chidambaram temple and gave it to all of the people and thus again reinvigorating Hinduism in, in Tamil Nadu. So uh, this is so Tamil Nadu was very very stable but um, right now I think one can call it the banana republic of Tamil Nadu, Dravida Karagam and the banana republic of Tamil Nadu because uh, it's become a very violent state, people are often fighting with each other, there is no trust, all of the villages are rotting and uh, farming is rotting, okay I'm getting a call, I'll, I'll continue this. Yeah, so I come back now. So I had the call from a mother of a boy in Bangalore and it lo it certainly looks like she's mentally disturbed because I gave her my mother's number and asked her to talk to her one or two months ago and she's not able to, the number I give her, she's not able to register because I think she's mentally disturbed. So she keeps calling me once every two weeks if I'm interested and I say no, I'm not interested. And then she continues to call me two weeks later. So this scene, I think she has a list of na women's names that she just keeps calling once in a while and sending her son's photos to, even if we say no to it. And um, I think I'm just so closed right now because again, the person who was I was to meet during the Babali didn't come. And so I'm also sort of really given up on the process because I'm just not able to trust anybody in this uh, Brahmin community. And uh, so that's where the Brahmins have come to. But let me come to why that is so. So um, in these traditional villages, of which there are many, how it was built built by our ancestors is the one of the ends of the temple. I think the um, east end has the Shiva temple, and the west end has the Vishnu temple, has the Perumal temple, and. Um, and uh, then there are Grama Devata's temple in other places. There's also the, the Kaval deities, the protective gods, which has Karpanar, um, yeah, primarily the Karpanar god. And then there is the Grama Devi, usually Mariamman, uh, Pechayamman, one of the Ammans. 
So these are the primary deities. There is the, the most temples uh, in more, all all of Tamil Nadu. This is the same in Tiruvannamalai district, in Tanjavur, in Tirunelveli, etc. As a, a big Shiva temple and then a big Vishnu temple, and in between this, the village is built. Um, and each of the so around the around near the temple is the agrahara which the, in which the brahmins live one of us is it is called the chetti teru one of the temples bordering the temple is the chetti teru which is the vaishya road and one of it is the mudaliyar street which is the uh, street of the kshatriyas and or, or at least the ones that um, take up the temp are, are landed the Vailala community primarily landed and take up the temple work so these and I don't the fourth street I don't know really but this is the primary uh, primary formation of uh, the the village so most of the uh, uh, communities with money landed up near the temple then there was the priest which, who were always near the temple the agrahara and uh, yeah the rest of the communities lived around in between the temples and around in the streets around and in between and then for the um, for the dalits for the sc as they call it now um, they were they were in the colony right now also it's the same they would call them colony and they would live little differently from this village formation and this village formation is uh, the traditional village formation this is how it's been for i think thousand years but i'm not very sure where the scs figure in this because the scs are not mentioned in the puranas and the scs are not mentioned in the sastras there are only four varnas there is no sc varna there is no varna which is out of these four varnas um so i'm not very sure why the why the certain castes like the parayars and the kuravars the kuravars clearly i think tribal community so they were the hill bound tribal community which clearly didn't live in this village formation between the shiv temple and the vishnu temple but i'm not very sure about the parayar community i think the only caste which were mentioned as untouchables in the in our traditional texts are the chandalas who are uh, burning the dead bodies now that's because the dead bodies were supposed they're supposed to catch something extra normal from the burning and so people were afraid of touching them and because they would consider that they would carry something from the world beyond to the current world which is quite healthy outside of the chandalas um, there is uh, no other mention of the sc communities or untouchables etc other than the chandalas traditionally through the thousands of years of hindu literature so um, i have a feeling the parayars either they may be involved in in the burning of the pyre or i'm not very sure what the pyre's traditional job was but the thing is right now it does exist the sc colonies the colonies of uh, sc communities which live outside of the village formation and um, this continues to date even to the village i was i was to uh, two days ago for the Babali and the village I was to in, in Trichy uh, about a few seven eight months ago same there now it looks like around the 1930s and 40s um, there was some disgruntlement in the Mudrayar in the Vellalars in the ruling classes in the Naidus, Naikars, Vellalars especially when they saw that uh, the, the Brahmins who were usually with tufts and praying at the temples got a bit more powerful and went into the british government etc etc so this was must have been difficult for them because uh, they they were the traditional you know zamindars owners of money etc etc so there, it looks like there's there was a fight between the ruling castes of tamil nadu and the brahmin community and thus started what they call the justice party which was primarily justice for the owners, justice for the Mudaliyars, justice for the Vellalars. Um, uh, yeah. And so they, 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 they made together the middle caste um, and they fought against the Brahmins. Uh, for, uh, 
basically trying to um, uh, take away power, traditional power. And they did succeed because they built a good story and then they had some storytellers who put forward this notion of a social equality. Um, but, um, but, but the blame was but the blame was misplaced, meaning the Justice Party or the Dravid, which later on moved into this Dravida Karagam, um, who, which was started by this uh, E.V. Ramasani Naikar, who was basically one of the zamindars. He was a loose moral zamindar and he didn't like the restriction of Hindu religion. So they made it to be not just anti Brahmin but anti Hindu also, blaming the Varna system for supposedly keeping the lower caste out. But the only lower caste kept out were the SC community and uh, uh, so there was a temple entry movement where uh, they, the SCs who weren't allowed into the Shiva and Mission rebels were brought in. But this wasn't by the, this wasn't by the Justice Party people, this was by a Brahmin guy, by the Nada Ayer in Madurai. Uh, so uh, yeah, so there was a yeah. So then it's good. I agree, totally agree with it. I, I think all communities, all people should have entry into the Shiva and Vishnu temples. But what happened was also the taking over of these temples by the government. So the the Chera, Tamil Nadu has one lakh fifty eight thousand temples, out of which around thirty thousand are huge Shiva temples. All of and, and, and Vishnu temples, Ram temples, etc., Vishnu avatar temples, all of these temples were taken over by the Tamil Nadu government, right? They did it. So, the Tamil Nadu government, because a lot of it has been under this uh, Dravid movement post independence, but also more in the 1960s, they wanted to squeeze out whatever Brahmins were left. So, they made a uh, temple department called the Tamil Nadu HRCE board. Uh, which paid salaries to coward the lands of the temples, did not manage it well, did not make any income to the temples. But they also refused to pay the Brahmin priests in the Agraharas. Till today, the many of the temples in which only one or two priests are left don't have any salaries. So they squeezed out the Brahmins from the Agraharas. And because uh, they'd also, uh, during the reservation system, declared the the Brahmins and some of the, all of the Brahmins, some of the more self-respecting Chetiyars like Nagaratars and some of the more self-respecting Mudalayars, which is the Kshatriya community, like Arkot Mudalayars, they declared them as forward castes. And the rest of the Mudalayars, the really rich, declared themselves as backward castes. And uh, yeah, so only a few communities uh, uh, were declared as forward caste and kept out of government jobs, of education system, uh, etc. etc. So the, the priests, the, the priests in Agrahara didn't have any source of income. They couldn't get any money from the temples anymore because the, te the government had taken it over and refused to pay them salaries by paying high salaries for the temple maintenance crew whom they appointed. And they refused to pay the priests because they hated the Brahmin caste. And, uh, and the Brahmins didn't have any other source of income. They couldn't get jobs in the local village, in any other, in the in a school or anything local government, etc. So they were forced to uh, forced to leave uh, the villages en masse. And so most of the Agraharas became empty by the 1980s. There was hardly anything left in the Agraharas. Most of the Agraharas were falling apart. Most of the homes of the Brahmins were sold to other castes or in, in, in this case other religion. A lot of Muslims took over the Agrahara homes because uh, because they did they had the money I suppose and uh, now it's it's one can ask why didn't the Brahmins stay till they die? Only a few of them do actually stay till they die. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's why I, I am a part of this group called Temple Restore, we are, where we are trying to rescue one of you, one or two of them who seem to be still there in the Agraharas praying to the gods and they keep this community together. You should see the faith that one or two of these traditional priests can bring to the whole village because they are very simple people and they're very devout and they really seem to know how to reach out to everyone. They do a fantastic job. I think it will be very difficult to replace uh, these traditional priests of the Brahmin caste. So then when most of these Agraharas have been emptied, so I think around 30,000 temples were there and I think maybe I think Allah, 
I think more than 25,000 of them are rotting and empty and the people, nobody is there to pray in them. The agraharas are all broken. Uh, yeah, most of them are lying locked and the key is with the HRCE, which doesn't do anything. It has an office. It doesn't uh, uh, take out the grass from the roofs of the temple, doesn't pay the priest, doesn't manage the property of the temple. They just take money from the thing and get their salaries and go home. This is the state of the Tamil Nadu HRCE board. And this is the state of the Tamil Brahmins. Most of them have just left their traditional roles and left. Um, did the Smartas, the ones not looking up at the temples and doing this way, the Parayanam, did they uh, um, escape? I don't think they escaped too. I think many of them willingly left their Vedic studies and uh, now are settled in America. So also the Tamil Brahmin community did very poorly. Most people can't get married and, if, and most of the parents are uh, lying alone in the country where the children are abroad. and. Um, they didn't fare well. I don't know if it's the if if their lives were the choice between doing as poorly as they're doing now and as uh, uh, and how they would have struggled in their villages. I don't know where is the worst choice. So the Justice Party, the Dravida Karagam, E. V. Ramasamy Nayakar was very successful in destroying the Brahmin community, uh, the Tamil Brahmin community. Now. Did the destruction of Tamil Brahmin community lead to uh, anything better? Were the temples maintained better? Were people allowed more entry access to the gods? Did social justice really happen? Just none of these things. M many of the temples under maintenance by the government are rotting, like I told you. You can go anywhere and check. Uh, they are rotting. And uh, these are huge temples. Um, and our ancestors across all castes must have worked very hard to build such a structure up and so must, must have so much devotion because you know in a village you will see nothing except small homes and then there is a stunningly huge temple so one would I mean the, the humbleness of it you know to not have anything for our own homes but to build these brilliant structures to stay over through thousands of years across invasions repeatedly as a gift to uh, our, our children in the future. It's sad to see them rotting. And uh, next was what? Next was um, social justice, right? No, see what has happened is now the Tamil Nadu government has learned that um, some temples make a lot of money, you know. So they may take over these temples like uh, Tirichandu temple, like Trivannamalai temple, etc. And they ticket it. And they keep out the poor so the poor have to stand in long queues but you have more money you go quickly so they've made a class system in the temples which is never there which was never there and so instead of social justice they just making using it as profit making bodies so they did not they do not in fact there was this lady that i was visiting she was saying she doesn't like to go to the big temples because she feels uh, judged she feels like she doesn't have money and why should she feels um, a difference you know so how is it that when you wanted to make a temple an equal place and that was a, what you were saying the Dravid Karagam people were saying we wanted access to for everybody or we wanted justice the justice party people were saying then how come they made uh, this um, structure of paying for entry and uh, hierarchy in payment the more more money you pay the easier access it, it is to the gods how come they've done that is that the idea of social justice and also social justice did not percolate into any of the other communities so the other many communities which were rich declared themselves as backward caste and they're still fighting over the being the politically uh, being the political people and uh, you know politicians and be and being uh, rich so they're still fighting about it so this the middle caste never really uh, and the ruling classes never really gave up their power and just for notion and the SC community, the ones who are traditionally supposedly kept under, their lives have not improved at all. They're still very poor. They still are not allowed by most of the other cars to uh, to formally live with them or interact with them at an equal level. Because the problem is not about religion, you see, the problem is not about Varna system. The problem is the mentality of the people and for that what you need is you need some of the elders of the village 
who generally have an accepting heart. Now, since the Dravida Karagam has built its base on the ruling and the middle caste, uh, it will be very difficult for the Dravida Karagam to actually bring in social justice because they haven't built uh, their power base on the poor caste because you can't, they are, they are terribly poor, their seas are terribly poor. So the social structure in, in, in Tamil Nadu never changed and it's also not going to. What has happened is the temples have rotted, the Brahmins have uh, disappeared uh, from the planet mostly or the heading there. And uh, that's all has primarily happened. Nothing else has changed. And it also will not change because you're pitting one, one, one people against the other. What uh, the Chola king did was to stabilize villages, to ask the communities to live together and to make them all devout and, and go into prayer and then use the temple as a way to teach calmness, harmony, using Ramayana and Mahabharata etc etc to the people so that in people in general learn um, how to live with each other. For example, the story of Rama, who is best, who, who is the king, and his best friend is Guhan, who is a, a, a boatman. It's a tale of equality, M like much of the Periya Purana. It's a tale of equality. The tribals have equal access to Shiva, and the tribals have equal access to, um, yeah, in, in most of the caste. Every caste has one person who comes in and becomes a devotee of Shiva and attains moksha. So I have a feeling that the SC colonies that exist now in 2022 did not exist in the time of Cholas and the Periya Puranam. Certainly I don't think in the time of Periya Puranam because the whole Puranam is, is about equality uh, in society and devotion to God. So somewhere in the last thousand years this seems to be a distortion in our community where there is a separate thing outside of the Varna system called the Dalits and somehow they are not integrating still. Yeah, that's not really happening. It certainly won't happen with the Dravada Karagam. Through the Dravada Karagam, what is just going to happen is more destruction socially uh, because uh, people are still fighting for the same government jobs, the same political posts, and they're pitching hate against one another. Nobody is going to win in this.